once known as the Chicago of the North, the shipping capital, but more so now it's just a beautiful place to live. It's the place you want to be. We're in Harrison Park, which was donated to the city 102 years ago. It's 100 hectares of along the Sydenham River, boating opportunities, hiking opportunities. But most important, the cheering goes on all year round for hockey, even if the temperature's warm, because they have artificial ice under this beautiful setting for a game today. I'm with Alex and Kenna. And Alex, can you explain to the viewer the hose rule? Um, the hose rule is hockey odd skating even day, so like, on like... No, oh, I think I get that. On an odd number of days, we're allowed to play hockey. And this is January the 4th, and here we are with our hockey sticks. So you know what that means, Kenna? We're breaking the law. How come we're allowed to break the law? Because hockey should be every day. Aren't you smart? And who's your favorite NHLer? Jonathan Taves. And Alex, who's your favorite? Ryan Kessler. We are heaven bound to Owen Sound. Georgian Bay, nestled along the Niagara Escarpment, waterfalls and woodlands cloaked in an air of optimism. It is the bright side of Canada. It comes with a few in more ways than one. Three of her most famous sons were blessed with a remarkable eye. Tom Thompson, the man who inspired the group of seven, is immortalized at the Thompson Art Gallery in town. The red leaves of the region burst from his paintbrush onto a generation's palette. There's World War I flying ace Billy Bishop, who helped the Royal Flying Corps win the war. His duels with German pilot the Red Baron held a nation wrapped a century ago. And Owen Sound's best athlete is Harry Applecheeks Lumley. The youngest goalie ever to play in the NHL at 17, he led Detroit to a Stanley Cup. It's been said the color red is the cure for sadness. Red leaves, red baron, red wings. All here in a happy place to usher in the new year. to Owen Sound Flight Services, Dave and Dan, a beautiful aerial of the south shore of Owen Sound on Georgian Bay, and there's the Sydenham River moving inside by the Harry Lovely Bayshore Community Center as we're holding up for a wonderful evening of hockey. We're also in the nation's capital, the Tampa Lightning, and the Ottawa Senators, the Lightning, Stephen Stamkos, Jonathan Drouin, Tyler Johnson. They've been on fire, but they've had their hands full with Ottawa over the years. Sens have won five of the last six. They've split the season series so far, both games in Tampa. Sen taking to the ice. They have real Owen Sound connections. And Bobby Ryan, who starred here for a number of years, second overall pick in 05. Cody Ceci was a defenseman who grew up in Ottawa, but actually played for the Owen Sound attack a couple of years ago. And Mark Breeds, assistant coach with Dave Cameron's squad, is from Owen Sound as well. He actually coached here, not from Owen Sound. He's a Toronto boy, but won the OHL Coach of the Year. Rogers hometown hockey on a very beautiful wintry evening in Owen Sound uh, on City Television. And you know, this is a perfect uh, idea. We have Ottawa Tampa and Expansion Sisters from 1992 in a way neither team was given a shot. Phil Esposito was using his charm down in Tampa. It was a real estate play in Ottawa and didn't we know that's the future of pro hockey but at the time we thought no way this ends would exist but they do and it's the same with the attack. They almost lost this franchise to Cornwall. They kept it. Bobby Ryan almost lost his career to problems at home but he kept it together and it's right on through. We'll have a feature on Bobby Ryan, a beautiful story on Danny Snyder, a gamer of gamers and we have a very special guest in Kirk Maltby four-time Stanley Cup winner with Detroit with Jennifer Bontrell. Jen. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. And Kirk, before you went on to win your Stanley Cups, you played hockey here. What are some of your best memories from Owen Sound? Well, this brings back memories right now, all this snow coming down. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I remember coming up here my first year, and I met a lot of great people. There's still a lot of great people here. I had dinner with my, my Billis that I live with here tonight. So, um, you know, after our scrimmages in, in training camp and whatnot, we'd go jump in the bay and bathe there instead of the shower. So uh, it's just it's just a great place to come, and then on top of that, it's a great place to play hockey. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Ron, back to you. You know, Trevor Lewis uh, won a Stanley Cup 
Of course, with LA, Brad Richardson, Stanley Cup with Los Angeles, played here for Owen Sound. Uh, there's just so many connections to uh, the attack, and we're going to feature that. But probably the player I think of, he had teammates like uh, Adam Meyer, Ryan Christie, Curtis Sanford. Uh, these are heart and soul guys. Joel Ward, he just had at the Winter Classic, played with uh, Danny Snyder. He was number 37 in the NHL, number 14 when he played in the Ontario Hockey League in town. And here's the story with Martin Geyer. People in Owen Sound have cheered for many players over the years, but they have a special place for the late Dan Snyder. He played four years for the OHL team here back in the late 90s when they were called the Platers. I think he struck a chord with all the young hockey players in Owen Sound. He had a large following and they're always glad to see Dan. Snyder was captain for his last two seasons in Owen Sound, a big contributor on the ice and off. Dan was uh, one of a kind. He uh, came from uh, Elmira, and uh, I guess because of his upbringing, he was, uh, it just came natural to him. And he always wanted to be in, in uh, the community doing something. He was either spending time at the hospital or going to school visits. Snyder had 94 points in his final year with the Platers, but was not drafted into the NHL. Instead of giving up, he signed minor league contracts and eventually made it with the Atlanta Thrashers. The Thrashers move in, they score! Dan Snyder with his first NHL goal. But a promising career was cut short. He was just 25 in his second NHL season when he died in a car crash. That was more than a decade ago. He's honored today by a number of awards given in his name, including the OHL's Dan Snyder Memorial Trophy, given to the Humanitarian of the Year. And in Owen Sound, like in the other places he played, he's remembered as the type of player who never gave up. He said right from day one that he was going to play in the NHL, and he was determined, and he did. And that's the sort of person he was. If you came to a hockey game, at the end of the game, you'd remember that Dan Snyder, because he played hard every shift, and he didn't take a night off. He was just great, and people remember that. He was neat having Kirk Malfi also mentioned his billets. Uh, Dan Snyder, uh, certainly in Elmira and in Owen Sound, so much loved. Cody Cece grew up in Ottawa, played his uh, junior with the 67s and then came here to the Owen Sound attack and he thought a lot about his uh, billets. The Reed family here in Owen Sound getting ready for the game against Tampa today. So let's set the scene on the Lightning and the Senators, George Strombolopoulos at Hockey Central in Toronto. George. Thank you very much, Mr. McLean. Much appreciated. Before we get a chance to set the scene about that game, and we will get into that. Just on, on, the, on the story about Dan Snyder, and talk about the family. Well, Ron knows the Snyder family very well, and um, I remember when Dan Snyder died, the people who really stood out were his parents, uh, Graham and Luann. Um, they made very public sh shows of support for Danny Heatley. Uh, there's a very famous story about how Mrs. Snyder went into the hospital room of Danny Heatley and hugged him and told him that he would be forgiven. Um, there are people who speak so well of Dan because of his great character. I think what we've learned in the aftermath is his great character came from his parents because the hardest thing to do in the world is to outlive your children and I have been amazed in the years after about how the Snyders handled themselves, how they handled that, how they've continued to live life. Ron knows them really well and they are incredible, incredible people. There's no other way to say it. And it's not, it's not hyperbole to say that is you know what an athlete does on their field of play that's fine mm -hmm. and we apply all these sometimes deserved sometimes ridiculous attributes to them but it's really the impact afterwards you play with Saku Koi well, you saw how it was whatever he did on the ice was dwarfed yeah. by his impact to the community you, you know what I love what I took from that piece it's it, it's Sometimes, I know this is going to sound wrong, the easy thing is kind of to make a lot of money to give some money to charity. Though we need tons of money for donations for everything, for research and everything. But the, the real thing that's important is the time, the time and the effort. Yeah. And, and I love hearing that about Dan. Is you go to hospital and school visits I, I took from the piece. And, uh, when I was in Boston, I used to go to Franciscan Children's Hospital all the time. And you could give the kids all this money, muffins, but just spending a little bit of time with those kids, it would leave a smile and give them a memory, and uh, he's created lots of those. Yeah, and somebody's darkest hour, just be there for them. Yeah. That is it. You know, we're, we're, we're out of time in this segment here. We'll, we'll talk more about the game at hand and puck drop as we get closer to it. But let's go back to you right now in Owens Town. Ron McClain. Can't get enough of Luann and Graham and Jake and Erica. Hello, and I remember they had a Yorkie Spike. His favorite player was Paul Correa. Imagine that, a dog loved Paul Correa. Anyhow. 
Owen Sound is setting for the Ottawa Tampa game. Population just about 25,000, way too small for having such a great place in senior and junior history, but such an inviting place. Folks want to come here, stay here, and make it happen.